Thank you, Anne. Uh, and uh, welcome. This is a tough issue, uh, as I'm sure you all are aware of. Um, I'm going to go through uh, the Norwegian Kennel Club's point of views uh, on this issue, and I'm also going to talk a little bit about how we in Norway work with dog welfare and what are our challenges. Dog welfare is the main focus. Um, I'm not very good at this clicking. Uh, dog welfare is the main focus in all aspects of the Norwegian Kennel Club. The board and I, we work according to the instructions given by our General Assembly. And that means that the large majority of dog owners in Norway cares about dog welfare worldwide and wants the conditions for dogs also in China to be looked at. They protest loudly against the barbaric and meaningless torture of dogs. Many have asked themselves, is this a PR jippo from the Norwegian Kennel Club? Absolutely not. We are in the decade of transparency and our members, they expect transparency and they deserve nothing less. We, we were also aware of that they eat dogs in China before the General Assembly and the vote for the World Dog uh, Championship. We did not know about the severe abuse of dogs prior to slaughtering, when the full scope of the abuse and torture came clear to us shortly after the election, we immediately contacted the China Kennel Union and the FCI, asking what was being done for dog welfare in China. In Norway, we don't only have a right to speak up, in Norway, you have a duty to speak up when you find that something is wrong. The freedom of speech is a very strong fundament in Norway. You have a duty to speak up. But we have not, till this date, we have not received an answer, neither from the China Kennel Union or the FCI, on what has been done for um, the dogs in, in China. We see it as a big risk that the Chinese uh, authorities and the public will regard the fact that they have landed this prestigious event as an acceptance of their culture as regards to dogs in society. To defend placing of international events in countries with heavily criticized conditions for humans and dogs cannot be defended as these unsatisfactory conditions do not change with carrying through the event. History has shown that it does not work this way. We cannot attend a party in a venue commonly used for butchery. It is important for us to be clear about our motives we do in no way question the motives and ambitions of the China Kennel Union. Our decision to urge Norwegian exhibitors and judges not to attend the show is a reaction to the grave abuse of dogs. This is why we question whether the FCI is functioning optimally and in accordance with its own standing orders and ambition to work for dog welfare worldwide. We welcome the efforts done by the China Kennel Union for stray dogs. However, these efforts do not stretch very far in a country that big. They should focus far more on legal work and lobbyism as legislation has proven to be the most effective tool to stop abuse of animals in other parts of the world. Do we have a lot of time? No, we don't. Look at this dog. 
would, what would Mr. Gandhi say? The FCI president, Rafael Santiago, opened his report to the General Assembly in Milano in June this year with these words. The greatness of a nation can be judged by the way its animals are treated, Mahatma Gandhi once said. This is why we are here today. We are representing nations that decided to protect and preserve humans' best friend. We are working not only for our dogs, but also for the greatness of our countries. He continues in a recent newsletter thanking the General Assembly for the trust placed in him when he was re-elected this year as president for the most important canine organization in the world. He said, I remain fully committed to working hard via our basic principles. Now more than ever, I promise to defend the rights of our dogs and their owners, to watch over their health and to raise awareness worldwide of what a healthy dog means to society, and I feel sure that you all will help me in this work. Well, Mr. President, that's what we are doing. We are trying to help. And we think these are excellent words, but we must act now. What do we want? We have in our correspondence with the FCI made some concrete suggestions that we believe may play a crucial part in improving the welfare of dogs internationally. Among our suggestions is a wish for a dedicated fund that can be used in crisis situation. At the latest General Assembly in Milano in June this year, the FCI treasurer proposed an increase in the fees paid by its member countries with uh, more than 12%. An argument for this was to be able to afford gifts to delegates. Well, I am a delegate, I don't need those gifts. I think none of the delegates need those gifts. Use that money for the dogs in China and use it now. We have made other um, suggestions. Um, we find that uh, the respect for the World Dog Show and the FCI is seriously damaged by being associated with a country that includes horrible dog traditions. And it's now crucial for the FCI to act and to show every dog owner and authorities worldwide that the main focus, what's our fundament, is dog welfare. We cannot wait another two years for a regular general assembly before changes to the statutes and the focus is made. We think that to save what's left of the FCI's reputation, we must act now. On Monday, in uh, two, three days, um, the Norwegian Ken Club, um, we have proposed, we have put on the, the agenda, uh, we have proposed five changes to the FCI's standing orders and statutes. And the most important one for us is number one, it's where we, uh, we suggest that there should be incorporated a definition of minimum dog welfare within the statute article number two. And our suggestion is to use uh, the definition made by the Bramble Commission in 1965, and it's the five freedoms. And the five freedoms should be established as the absolute minimum dog welfare to be accepted by the FCI and us member countries. And the five freedoms are freedom from hunger, thirst and malnutrition, freedom from abnormal heat and cold, and heat, you can't boil a living dog, freedom from fear and stress. What do you think this dog? Do you think he's stressed? Freedom from injury and illness, freedom to exercise normal behaviors. Where do we go from here? We have uh, proposed other um, suggestions uh, at the General Assembly of the FCI's European section on, uh, on Monday. The most important to us in the Norwegian Kennel Club is the five freedoms. But we have also uh, made a suggestion 
to change uh, the, the statutes um, and we want that for the sitting period members of the general committee cannot take assignments as judges for world championships, section shows and trials. I, I accept that this is very Norwegian. In, in Norway this would be uh, something that would be obvious uh, because it should not be possible for anyone to question the motives of member of a board or a general uh, committee. So, um, are we perfect in Norway? Absolutely not. But most importantly, what we do have in Norway is, is very um, strong animal welfare laws. Uh, and of course our situation is somewhat different. Uh, we don't have the following problems. We don't have stray dogs, we don't have rabies, we don't have dog racing. Uh, Rehoming is not a big problem in Norway. There is a problem, but it's not a big problem. And we only have a few shelters and puppy mills are basically non-existent. But of course we have challenges. Um, we have as many countries, we have some breeds with features that have become too extreme, so much so the dog is no longer healthy. For example, some of the breeds with short noses. The nose is supposed to be short on some breeds, but that does not mean the shorter the better. The same goes for the breeds with big round eyes. Big round eyes does not mean bigger eyes the better. Many breeds are small in numbers and have small gene pools. Among them are some of the Norwegian breeds. We are still fighting hereditary diseases. The increase of unregistered dogs is problematic for many reasons. We lose control with the total development of the breeds. Increased threat of diseases through imported and unvaccinated dogs, which is a threat both to dogs and to humans. Uh, we have a increased threat of year-round leash laws, which is in contradiction to one of the animal laws in Norway, that's, which clearly states that every animal should be able to exercise normal behavior. And of course, we remind the politicians uh, very often about that. Um, we have uh, a list of banned breeds, seven banned breeds in Norway today. We, st we strongly disagree with this. No breed is dangerous, an individual can be dangerous, but no breed is dangerous. That's our statement. This is our focus um, areas uh, in the coming years. We are uh, working with uh, the BSI, which is a very important tool for us when it comes to exaggerations. That's a Nordic cooperation and a Swedish initiative we have RAS, that's breeding strategies for all breeds. That's a cooperation between the uh, actual breed club and the Norwegian Kennel Club. Small gene pools. We have initiated cross-breeding projects for the preservation of some breeds. Among them is the Norwegian Lundehund, which we are worried about. Uh, through many years, we have been freezing uh, semen from vulnerable breeds. We have uh, proposed mandatory reporting on uh, surgery of respiratory organs to the responsible Norwegian department. Trouble breeding is something that we consider very dangerous to the dog. It's very painful to the dog and we focus a lot on, on that and we work very well with the breed clubs in Norway with these breeds. Compulsory microchipping for all dogs, that's not um, manifested by law in Norway, we ask for it. Uh, and the most important thing when you are thinking about getting a dog is to evaluate your life and think what kind of dog is right for my life. That match has to be good, otherwise there will be no good animal welfare, that will be no good ownership. We uh, collaborate, and that's very important. We in Norway, we collaborate very well with other animal welfare organizations and we meet on a regular basis. And, and that's one of the key things 
to work for good dog welfare in Norway. We are constantly in contact with large media companies to talk about how we can prevent deceptive marketing. Our work to revoke the ban on certain so-called dangerous breeds will continue. And we have to keep membership in our breed clubs attractive. We are competing for people's time. Since joining the FCI in 1930, we have put significant effort into improving regulations and strategies to promote health and welfare for dogs nationally and internationally. This work will continue both in Norway and on the international arena, whether we are a member of the FCI or we are not a member of the FCI. We are quite optimistic and we look forward to this, this work. We are more dedicated than ever to ensure continued good dog welfare in Norway and to improve living conditions for dogs worldwide. We hope and we work to make this event a testament to the work we already have done, as well as a promise of things to come. And then, it's only left for me to say, welcome to Norway. Thank you. Good. Okay, so I repeat. <laughs> so just to mention that today, and uh, this is an event that it was created between the FCI and um, and the uh, Yukanuva, and uh, and then is that to remember that today in the main ring at four o'clock, this is uh, projection at four fifty in the main ring is going to be the qualifying event for the Yukanuva World Challenge. Uh, Jats by the famous Norwegian Jats living in England, and um, and then is that we want to invite everyone and to everyone to watch in the live streaming, following the groups, and we thank you as well the European Dog Show and the Norwegian Kennel Club for us to host this. So all of you welcome and thank you very much. That. That there has not been any questions. Question. Yes, I'm still waiting for them. So am I. Yeah? I'm just very surprised, bearing how 
emotive the whole subject is. Mm -hmm. and nobody feels that there's a question. I actually have one question. Yeah. I, I keep hearing in the various statements that are bounded around, the FCI has done this, the FCI has done that. Mm -hmm. It was not, was it, a unilateral decision that the world show goes to China? Was it not voted on? Yes, it was voted on. And no one has singled out those that voted in favor mm. versus against. It's just that, oh, the FCI has made this horrible mistake, as opposed to actually for the accountability of the individuals that voted. Why is that? I'm not sure I understand your question, but there was, the China got the most votes. That, there is no question about that. But as I said in my presentation, we in the Norwegian Can Club, we did not know about the severe abuse and the barbaric handling of the dogs prior to slaughtering. We were aware of the fact that they eat dogs in China, but we did not know about the abuse. And we think uh, the FCI and the China Kennel Union had a duty to tell that to the General Assembly. And when we in Norway learned about these facts due to the massive media exposure on the Yulin Dog Festival, and I want to make it clear that for the Norwegian Kennel Club, this is not only about the Yulin Meat Dog Festival, it's, this is happening every day in China. And they can, we find that very strange, eating dogs. But we have to accept that this, th that's culture. But we want them to treat the dogs a minimum according to the five freedoms before they kill them and eat them. We don't want them to mistreat and abuse these dogs prior to slaughtering. Because that's, that's also a part of the culture, the tradition to mistreat these dogs. And, and we won't accept that. And um, as I said, in, in Norway, we, the, this, the freedom of speech is, is very, very strong. And you don't only have a right to speak up, you have a duty in Norway to speak up when you think that something is wrong. So we are, we are absolutely shocked by the fact that we have been threatened with sanctions from the FCI because we want to work for dog welfare worldwide. It is not, it's not possible for us to understand. Excuse me? At the time of the vote, did Norway vote in No, favor? we did not vote for China. We voted for Germany, and we have, be, we have said that publicly. We, we voted for, for Germany. Uh, and yeah, that, that's why we thought that Germany uh, it was the best host this time for, for the World uh, Dog Show. Uh, as I said, uh, we did not know about the abuse at that time. When we found out, then we spoke up. And we tried to contact the China Kennel Union, we contacted the FCI, we didn't get an answer, and in our opinion, this was urgent. We, we wanted to try to stop the Yulin Dog Meat Festival, call us naive, but that was what we wanted. We wanted the FCI and the China Kennel Union to join us in stopping the Yulin Dog Meat Festival. When, we, when at, that, at that time, we did not know that it, this was an everyday practice. We, we only, so, so, so we wanted the help from FCI and China Kennel Union to stop the Yulin Dog Festival. So we thought it was urgent, we waited 10 days, and then we went public. When you say it's urgent, the, the festival, which is actually isn't a dog meat eating festival, it's, it's, the, it's a summer festival which has been infiltrated by dog meat traders. Mm -hmm. So that takes place once a year. Mm -hmm. So would you not give them a chance to respond, bearing in mind that it only takes place once a year? When you talk about urgency. Yeah, urgency. We waited 10 days, and I think that's a lot of time. Uh, when you see this picture, I think 10 days is uh, perhaps no, too long. I accept that. Yeah. I also accept that you know, the five freedoms are lauded, no, that's a no brainer. Mm. And that's going to be accepted, of course. Mm. But do you think that the people who are trading meat in China will understand those five freedoms or even hear about them? No. No, I don't, I don't think they will understand them. I don't think they will accept them. I think what is necessary in China to work uh, with the authorities, uh, because during the Olympics in 2008, the Chinese government, they banned the dog eating. And that worked. 
And when the Olympics was finished and the ban was no longer there, the dog eating and abuse started again. And China, as I have read and heard by t uh, and learned by talking to people who know China, is that the Chinese people are very law-abiding. And if you can get a law that says this is forbidden, uh, then the thing will stop. And, and I think that's what we and that's what we wanted. We want FCI to spearhead that work. We want to join FCI in that work. Bearing in mind you want them to spearhead it and you want to work with the authorities. Yeah. Could you tell us why you didn't attend the meeting that they called? That's, that was because we, we, um, we consider that to be a kind of cult in Potepe. Mm. Being called in to answer for something. Yeah, been called in to answer to something. And we didn't think we had something to answer to. We had the board of Norwegian Can Club has discussed this issue in two board meetings, two long board meetings. And the co their conclusion was the same every time. So why should we use money that can be spent on dog welfare to go to Brussels and to say the same thing again and again. We uh, suggested that the meeting could take place on Skype. So we would have attended a meeting on Skype. I tried to talk to my wife on Skype. It doesn't always work very well to <laughs> Okay, we have, we have Skype in Norway. It's a very, uh, very long stretched, oh, yeah. far stretched country. And we do Skype and telephone meetings all the time. What you said, bearing in mind you raised all the questions. Mm -hmm. And then the FCI offered to bring all the parties back together again. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people thought that was yeah. a, a negative step in your, yeah. from your perspective. Yeah. And, and you, you'd actually made them rethink it. You made them get back together again. Mm -hmm. And then you said you're not going to go. They mm -hmm. found us to get on. Mm -hmm. I, I can see now when I look back in retrospective. Yes, I can, I can understand why we are criticised. It's like a yeah. child that they say, no, I'm not going, you know, it didn't look good. No, um, and, and as I say, in, in retrospect, I, I will take that criticism. So uh, our, our chairman of the board would like to say something. Uh, you will have to... <laughs> no, you, are, you haven't the voice to come on streaming, Tom. Okay, I'm Mr. Tom Martinson. I'm the chairman of the board for the Norwegian Kennel Club. Um, I decided that we shouldn't go. And I said it's because we don't go with a threaten over our heads. The first reaction we got from FCI was a threaten for sanctions. And we don't negotiate under that conditions. Um, for us, we stood up for the freedom of speech. We said what we, was our meaning and our main goal from our owners. And if we don't do that, we have no meaning existing as a dog union. But it was the sanctions, threatening of sanctions, that did us not to go to Brussels. Before, the threat came before the meeting was called. Could I ask you another question? Yes, absolutely. If anybody else wants to ask something, please. You know your focus areas that you mentioned? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, do you accept that many other countries, not just FCI, but also UK Canada, because there's some UK Canada members in this room? Um, would you accept that we already follow most of those focus areas ourselves? It's almost like you're saying that this is something new, which is isn't. No, no, this isn't something new. Uh, this this work has been going on for years, and it still have to be our focus area, because uh, you can you can quickly uh, you have to help me with the English now uh, d d destroy in destroy a breed, but it takes a long time to make it right again. And this work has to um, continue, and the focus, we are going to strengthen the focus. Yeah, this isn't unique for Norway, absolutely not.
Uh, some of the other Scandinavian countries in their statements on, on this issue have suggested that part of the problem is that uh, in the FCI every, every member country has the same vote, whether they're a, a big dog nation mm. or just mm. a very small new one. Mm. Do you feel that that is part of the problem and would, would you like to see that change? Yes. We do, um, and it has already been discussed uh, with several occasions by the Norwegian Kennel Club's board. Uh, and we are taking uh, that issue with us to our General Assembly in, in November to discuss it. Yes, so we think that's part of the problem. We are, we are paying, but we, we have no, just a small voice. But the Nordic country is 25% of the turnover in, in the FCI organization and we have 3% of the votes. So that's the problem. Like yeah, we would like it to how, see it change. How, how would you propose that it would be changed? That we have to discuss with our Nordic co uh, colleagues. So uh, we, have, we have discussed uh, some, some did ways to do it. Did but anybody, did anybody put this question up at the assembly ever? Excuse me? Did anybody put up this question at the assembly, general assembly ever? I don't, I don't know. I have only been with Norwegian Kennel Club for 18 okay. months and I haven't, I don't know, I haven't so investigated that. No, it was not an issue at this General Assembly. So my other question is, uh, if uh, the, the, the country of your behalf would uh, win, would you take this, uh, all this matter about the China and all this other Union festival uh, anywhere? You understand? If the Germany would win instead of China, mm -hmm. would the uh, Norwegian Kennel Club would make uh, all this uh, uh, against? I mean, would you still care? Yeah, care oh, about of course, the of course, we and would. This much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that uh, I we, we would absolutely like care. You know, uh, Germany didn't win. Mm -hmm. Nobody put up the issue about the voting, the mm -hmm. voting. Mm -hmm. And now we have a China is flag, flying the flag against mm -hmm. whatever because mm -hmm. we don't like it. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, um, I think that you said that uh, the issue is voting, way of voting, and that uh, nobody is uh, really happy with this except some countries. Yeah. And that's why I'm asking if yeah. anybody asked about this. Okay, but the issue for us is dog welfare. Uh, it's, it's absolutely dog yeah. welfare uh, and it was very unlucky that uh, it was China who won this vote because we would have reacted anyway. How was it coincidental that it wasn't, I mean the slaughtering and the maltreatment of mm -hmm. dogs is something that is not a new subject, it's not just suddenly yes, been uncovered mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and it happens to only come to your attention after the voting's been completed? Yes, it was due to the, the media exposure. The media worldwide and in Norway focus very much on these uh, events uh, a week, I think, after the General Assembly uh, in Milano. And then... It's midsummer. It's a midsummer festival, so it's always a midsummer. Yes, so perhaps it was a week before... As Lisa's saying, it's gone on year after year. No, yes, yes. No, I have never known about this. I knew they ate dogs in China. I did not know about the severe abuse. But it's no different than the cattle slaughterhouses, the chicken yes. factories. Yes, yes, and that we care about all animals, but our mission is dogs. So we care about whales and cows and chickens, but we work for dogs. <coughs> Uh, what's your aim? Do you want to change location of the World Dog Show or you want to change policy in China or you want mm -hmm. to change FC and, and the interest in dog welfare? The most, the most important thing for us is dog welfare. So we would like things to change in China. That's the most important thing. But I think the time to act is now because the Chinese should not have been given the World Dog Show. We should have used this as a, a tool to get them to change, to work against the authorities and to get a regulation for animal welfare in China. So to your question, th the most important thing is that this changes in China. So you're punishing a country, an entire country, and the ability to have that venue which brings in education seminars that can be led by the FCI to educate those people mm. by saying because of the acts of a few traders and slaughtermen, mm. we're not letting any yeah. country... But, uh, but I, I don't think 10 million dogs every year is a few. 
I think that's a hell of a lot of dogs. It's a hell of a lot of suffering. Uh, so so I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't agree with you. Uh, and as I said during our presentation, we think that uh, awarding this, this big event, fantastic event, to a country with this horrible tradition can by the authorities and the society be taken as an acceptance of this happening. And we see that giving the Olympics, as an example, to China hasn't changed anything when it comes to human rights. So um, I think that this must be used as a tool. Yes, Could I change the subject completely? Well, sort of completely. I've been asked by a lot of other media people to ask the question about the Shih Tzu handling this today. Yes. Yeah. Is there anything you can tell us? Yeah. Uh, I can. Um, we have had very strong reactions uh, on that incident. And uh, when we are finished here, the uh, FCI represent, and I will sit down, uh, talk about this, and there will be a reaction. How quickly will that reaction be like? Yeah, it's it's 10 days. <laughs> no, 10 days, today. The reaction will come today. Uh, and we have done some. Uh, uh, it's, it, uh, the FCI regulation states clearly that it's uh, prohibited to lift a dog like, like that. So, but I have to discuss it with the FCI representative. It'll, it'll be a reaction before Best in Show takes place. Yes. Could I change the subject yet again? Mm -hmm. Apparently there's a European dog show also taking place here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Uh, can you tell us what the gate was yesterday, the attendance? Uh, we don't have the uh, attendance figures uh, available uh, just now. We, you know, we have all the figures for the uh, uh, reads, the entries, um, entries per country. That's available on uh, eds2015.com. Uh, but but uh, the oh, attendance, attendance, the public, no, we don't have those available uh, right now, but I will get them out via eds2015.com uh, later today. Okay, so, so again, because I've been asked by lots of the trade people, because they, they, they felt a little isolated from where they are hungry. Um, a lot of people complained to me yesterday that the gates are closed to okay. the dog show and the trade area. So if anybody wants to shop, we've got to come all the way down here to find one open door sure. instead of being able to get through from the door. No, thank, you, thank, for thank, that. thank you for that, that feedback. I wasn't aware of that. And I'll talk to, uh, to both the uh, technical people and the Norway Trade Fair staff. Thank you. Can I ask just one thing? Sure. Um, you talked about the five freedoms. Yes. Uh, what is your personal perception of dog shows? Of oh, dog shows? Yeah. I see a lot of happy dogs. Uh, I see a lot of happy owners. Uh, but. We are a bit afraid, and that discussions I know every country have um, about the overdrivelser i stell or so. Yeah, when overdriver stell or handling. Uh, excessive of. grooming. Yeah, excessive grooming, excessive handling. That worries us a bit, but all in all, uh, we think, uh, yeah. Dogs that are we being taken well care of, um, responsible owners, happy dogs, happy people. So I enjoy it very much. Can I ask you a question to follow up to that? Yeah. How long have you been involved in showing dogs? <laughs> Never. Thank you. Now, how do you go about making sure that, that the, the dog show dogs are well taken care of? We have. Make sure that they don't stay on yeah. the tables for long. Yeah. Yeah. Also, we have four veterinarians going around, uh, and they are especially aware of that kind of incidents. And they also check the judging according to the breed-specific instructions regarding exaggerations in pedigree dogs. So yes, we are constantly around uh, checking. Mm. And I may add that we do have ethical guidelines for the treatment of dogs mm. at shows. They're available from our webpage in English as well. I can give them to you if you're interested. Just one follow-up. Um, you spoke about puppy mills yep. um, and your breeding programs. Do you have education for your breeders in your region? Mm. Yes. And we have had for how many years, Astrid? Utdanning of opdrettere. Okay, cool. You can say a few words about uh, our breeders. Yeah.
Can you can you say some words? <coughs> we do a lot of uh, of breeder education in Norway. We have been doing uh, doing that for about 30 years. I have been doing courses all around Norway for uh, 25 years. Uh, and it, it's voluntarily because we don't like mandatory in Norway. We want people to come because they are interested. And our problem is not uh, to make the people come, it's to find big enough conference halls so we can take in all people. Yeah. And we do, do these courses 11 places around in our <laughs> very long country. And even on, on small places, there are up to 100 breeders that comes to these seminars. It's two weekend seminars. We had close to 200 in uh, Oslo um, this year. So we go around, we do this, we do it for the people who will think they will try to, to be a breeder. And also for the experienced breeders, because we promise that everybody, if you are very new or have done it for this for 30 years, you will learn something on these courses. And I think they do, because they are coming again and again. So we'll do a lot of breeder education in Norway. Pardon? I it's not mandatory. It's not mandatory because why should it be mandatory if they come in anyway? Okay, and do you do follow-ups on your breeders to make sure that they follow your... We have our uh, code of ethics for the breeders. We have our breeding regulation, we have our breeding strategies, and of course, we have our breed clubs who also do the follow-up follow -up of their breed. We also go out to breeders' seminars in, in the breed clubs. But do you go to their houses? Do you see how No, houses? we do not go to their houses. Because, because that is not up to the kennel club. If somebody reports that this is not good, uh, we go to the government or they go directly to the government and then the government will come and check. So uh, are you sure that none of the Norwegian breeders are puppy mills? Uh, if you ask about uh, puppy mills, you know, in, in Norway we have very small breeders, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, they breed, they breed uh, just a couple of litters a year, maybe some a bit more. Uh, if they are breeding a lot, it's actually mostly non-pedigree dogs, and we cannot control non-pedigree dogs, but the authorities can do it, so they go in and check. If anybody calls, they will check. So they have very good control of the breeding in Norway for animal welfare. I would like to add a comment to that, and that, that's why I, I stress that it's very important that we have this group. Uh, we cooperate very well with the other animal welfare uh, associations, and among them is the Norwegian department responsible for animal welfare. They are in this group. We cooperate very well. We meet on a regular basis, and yes, it works. And also, uh, the Norwegian Veterinary Association is also in this group. And that is also important. I have one question about the Hispanic breeds. Um, you get the road just as it was like working to revoke the ban on the certain breeds. And uh, yeah, people are uh, commenting that is also part of the criticism during this mm. last month mm. that also the, you cannot change this in your country and we are expecting to change something such a big thing mm. 600 years mm. <laughs> custom mm. in this country mm. and actually the Chinese uh, pedigree dogs as I'm informed is like one percentage of mm. all these dogs they have there mm. so it's really small percentage of the people, people who can move all this situation from one corner to another mm. uh, with force in, in all of us coming together I think it's almost quite impossible in a short period of time mm. I think. Mm. and uh, still we are, we are facing in Europe not just in your country uh, in many many countries with the banning the purebred dogs and I think this is, the, this is my personal opinion and opinion of many many breeders as well, mm. but I'm talking about my behalf now, mm. uh, that uh, actually this is the issue we are facing with, that uh, they are banning, I mean the government, European Parliament, whatever the authorities, mm. banning the breed after the breed, mm. with certain reasons why this breed is whatever, mm. dangerous, big. In the future we would have white dogs spending a lot of water, so we would ban the white dogs, you know, mm. maybe. And uh, this is how I feel after 30 
two years being in the dog scenery, that this is actually the main problem in our environment, not in China, not in the Pacific. Mm. Mm. And uh, still, mm. Norway cannot change it, because one can cloud cannot change it, this is for mm. sure. Mm. It's too much for one, one mm. organization. Mm. But uh, you, I, I wrote this working, working on remote and on certain breeds. Yeah. Do you have some project you are mm. working on? Mm. This? Mm. And what is the... What is the uh, what is your opinion as a Norwegian chemical about this band in the breeds? Oh, we are, we talk. Obviously, there is a kind of extension to this question because uh, you mentioned here in your bullets that you are working on remote and band on certain breeds. Mm -hmm. And a few slides before, you just mentioned that uh, you are treating dogs as individuals, so you are not agreeing with the rule at all. So you said there is no aggressive breeds, there are aggressive individuals. Mm. So why you are working on bad or revoking bad conservative yeah. Could you Tom? Just a comment about that, that's a, a linguistic... Uh, um. That's simply a linguistic ambiguity. We're against the ban on all the breeds. We're against uh, uh, any... No, it's all certain. Is in terms of there, there are certain banned breeds and we're against the ban on all of them. So we're against the ban on, on, on uh, all breeds. Uh, we did uh, submit a report two years ago, I believe, to all the political parties uh, and uh, the political de the justice department uh, in, um, in uh, Norway. And uh, we're still following them up. We've had meetings with all the political parties trying to get as many as possible uh, on our side. Uh, and uh, we are optimistic that within the next few years we will be able to get it revoked. If I can have one more question about this topic, because I'm representing Polish Kennel Club. We have a similar problem with our government, uh, who, is, uh, who has entered uh, or introduced a kind of the, uh, let's say, the restrictions for a certain breeds. It's not a full ban, but it's, there are some restrictions. But honestly, they are respecting only pure breeds. How it's in Norway? Because you have probably less percentage of the mongrels or, or, or not a pedigree with dogs, but still there are dogs. If it's an American Staffordshire Terrier or whatever, uh, does it have a pedigree or not? Uh, is not the proof that it's not this breed. How your government is, is Act acting? Actually, uh, the, the mongrels uh, is a a more acute problem than the, the list of the banned breeds because we have owners of mixed uh, breeds in Norway today facing legal battles, completely unnecessary, simply because it's impossible for them to document the parents of their dog. Uh, earlier this year, we put together a panel of judges in one case uh, who put together a statement to the police who fortunately in this instance decided to take the statement from our panel on board and uh, handed the dog back to, uh, to its owner. We've offered to do this as a permanent solution and offer it in all the cases where there's any doubt uh, regarding the parents of the animal. Uh, and we're hopeful that this particular positive case will set uh, the precedence for these, um, these um, issues uh, f in the coming years. So does it mean that it's everywhere like this, that it's better to be on the black market and if I start to pay my taxes, I will be recognized by the government and punished immediately? So uh, I'm not sure I understand your question. That's a kind of ironic. But uh, you know, it means for me that, uh, that again we have the situation that if I'm breeding the dogs without the pedigrees, no one can say to me that I'm breeding whatever the breed is, uh, uh, Dogo Canario or, or American Staffordshire Terrier or whatever. I'm just breeding a kind of a dog. No, I mean, th that, that would be the most unfortunate situation in Norway today because you are the one who is obligated to prove that you are not breeding uh, a dog uh, of, of one of the banned breeds. You have to prove it. So it, th that would be the worst thing that you could do because you could find yourself in a very unfortunate situation. So um, we're definitely seeing it uh, you know, in, in a positive light as well in the sense that buying a registered dog where you have documentation is, is the, the best thing. But the most positive thing would be to have the, the list of banned breeds removed altogether because you wouldn't have these cases. And then breeds. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And when you refer to banned breeds and you're talking about certain breeds and you're stripping them to FCI recognized breeds, because I'm a licensed judge for American Bull Terriers, but they're not exactly yeah. recognized by the FCI, but they do have extensive pedigree registries in North America. 
So would that mean that you're only working on revoking bans on those breeds that are recognized by FCI? Or are you working on revoking bans on breeds that are recognized by alternative registries as well? Sorry, I'm not sure I understand your question. <laughs> it says there you're working on revoking bans on certain breeds. On all breeds. Uh, also, the pit bull is uh, a banned breed in Norway. It's not an FCI breed, but it's still a banned breed. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes. No, it's uh, the Norwegian government also has put in uh, not non-FCI breeds on, on the uh, list of banned for breed and also mixes of these breeds. So that is obviously not the FCI breeds. And we want to focus on all, call it breeds, because um, we also want to fight for, for the do dog owners that the dog owner should prove that this dog is not a mixture of that breed and that breed and that breed. That is quite impossible for, for an owner. And we want to focus on the dangerous dogs instead of the dangerous breeds. Uh, I don't know if I could perhaps return to the question of the SCI, uh, and perhaps um, uh, questions have to perhaps be directed to the, some of the SCI officials here. With, when the Danish counterpart issued their statement, they suggested that if a country got to the stage where they felt they had to leave the FCI, the FCI would then refuse to recognise that country's registrations, pedigrees and, and judges. Is that really the case? Anyone want to answer? I do not want to discuss FCI matters with the Norwegian Kennel Club in a press conference. Okay. Sorry. We have another place to discuss that, and that place is on Monday. And to those who don't know it, I'm the president of the FCI European section. I'm the president of the FCI. Yeah. 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 We are listening very carefully, but we do not discuss the matter here. And, <laughs> and that's the country who offered us and stood by the Muhammad caricatures. Okay, you wins. Okay, sorry. I think you are very brave. Thank you. And if nobody speaks out, nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. And I think that this, all this discussion, mm -hmm. I don't say if it, uh, if it was right or wrong to give the world show to China, mm -hmm. but anyway, the whole discussion has, uh, can only lead to, it, it has woken up people, yep. the dog people in, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, people now see, uh, clearly this this problem mm. and also I hope that this will uh, lead to some improvements mm. in the FCI organization because I think that the FCI cannot afford to lose the Nordic countries. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's what we want. We want change uh, for dogs. And we have to change the FCI organization. I totally agree with you. We have to focus on dog welfare. Uh, our members won't accept anything less. So we have to do it. Wins? Uh, it's actually raising the profile. That, that's what you've done. You have raised the profile of welfare, there's no question. You've mm. done a good job of that. Mm. But what happens if the government changes the venue for the 2019 World Show? What will we do then? As I said, the most important thing for us is to work towards the Chinese authorities and to make a fundamental change for dogs year round. Um, so uh, that, that we, have, we have not put up an ultimatum on that. Sorry. We have not uh, given an ultimatum. No. So you have we, we have not, uh, can you say, Anna, is, she speaks much better English than me. We've not, been, we've not given an, any, any ultimatum. Oh, we haven't. We, oh, she say, she's saying the same thing as me, so I'm just going to raise my voice. We have not given an ultimatum uh, to that. Um, 
in contradiction to what we um, think that AFCI have done against us. Uh, if we don't go out publicly and say, go on, go to China, have fun, uh, then they will pew, kick us out. So, um, so and, and to a Norwegian or a Nordic uh, person, that is uh, quite shocking um, because, as I said, in the Nordic countries, you don't only have a right to speak, you have a duty to speak. You're obviously seem very happy to conduct this debate on Facebook, actually. As I said, our, our, this is the decade of transparency. I am from the media. I'm from the media business. I have 25 years background as an executive, top executive in large media companies, and I followed this. And we said uh, at the mid 90s, we said, now it's time for full transparency. And we are now 20 years later. Uh, and in the media business, there has been full transparency for at least the last 15 years. And and. I think when the media business can be transparent, why shouldn't a member organization working for dog welfare be transparent? And uh, our members, they expect full transparency. Yeah, I think with social yeah? media, you can end up causing more problems as well as being transparent. But I, I, don't, I don't agree with you, Wins. I think we should, we should, embrace, we should embrace people's uh, engagement and their commitment yes, to this be issue, be and, and we should use it to go forward. Yeah, so, <laughs> no, I think they have lo done a lot of good. Um, I really do think that. How is the uh, feeling of the uh, the clubs, the national clubs? Are they yes, very supportive. Very supportive. In general, yes, very supportive. We have had one or two uh, critical voices, and they have been pressed down. Um, so, very supportive. Do you believe you still have the, the support of your members uh, if you have to leave the FCI? Yes. You do? Yes. And what happens if the FCI does not recognize um, the Norwegian Kenya or your pedigrees? This we are. Uh, to the yeah. This we are going to discuss with our Nordic colleagues tomorrow. We have discussed it, of course, but we are also going to take a new discussion about that tomorrow. But do you think you still have the support from your members? Yes, they will not accept to be um, a part of an organization that does not put dog welfare at the top of the list. So they won't be able to export their products, but that would be okay with them? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Will there be, after your meeting tomorrow, will there be a press release put up on the website? We will, after the European section, Monday. Uh, Monday? About your meeting, your decisions about what to do. What yeah, we will give some information to our members. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's on Monday. To public or to your members, yes? We will give some information. I didn't understand, sorry. No, we will, we will go public with some information. Yeah, yes. And as I said, the, fi the five freedoms, that's the most important thing for us. The five freedoms. To clearly state through the five freedoms that this is a minimum accepted dog welfare within the FCI organization. The five freedoms. The five freedoms. Yeah. That has been due for all livestock since 1965, and it's by time we took them into the FCI statutes and said that this also go for dogs. But that's not what, what I was asking. Mm -hmm. is if you're meeting with the other Nordic countries to decide mm -hmm. what the next step mm -hmm. is, no, there will not be a statement. There will not, not yet. Be a statement. No, not yet. Okay. We're not disputing the file, really. We're just wanting to know when we'll have our next batch of information to report. Okay. What time is tomorrow's first meeting? It's at 10 o'clock. What's, what's on the agenda tomorrow? Uh, on the agenda. <laughs> uh, do you want to say something uh, about the agenda tomorrow, Christian? Uh, 
Uh, tomorrow's pre press conference, um, I'm going to be talking about the native breeds of Norway, just uh, telling a little bit about them and also uh, telling about some other projects we have going on in order to save these uh, breeds and preserve them for the future. So that's the topic for tomorrow. Can you arrange the no, we'll, there will not be live stream tomorrow, so it shouldn't be an issue. If there's, if there's a microphone, we can use that if you have troubles hearing. We'll see how many people show up tomorrow. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> any further questions? I will be in the press lounge for any practical issues that you uh, may want to discuss as well for the next hour or so. Yes, Carl. Sure, sure. Ah, for the practical things for the main ring. Yeah. Uh, we have a little bit of complaints about the lights that are not sure. even on the on every spot. Yeah. Can. Uh, well, we, well we, can, uh, we can discuss it in the press lounge if you, okay, if you want yes, to. For people yes. taking photographer, photography I uh, need to discuss that, we can talk about it. Okay. And uh, we can uh, discuss it with uh, Roger as well. Yeah, it's on the... Uh, okay. Because again, because of the closed doors, everybody has to go all the way out to go all the way back in. And if you're coming from the collecting room, I think it's like an enclosed tunnel. Sure. So nobody knows how to get from one place to the other. Okay, well, thank you. I'll give uh, that feedback to the people who are managing the big, uh, the big ring. So it's not from me. As I said, I will be available in the press uh, lounge for the next hour or so if there's anything. Thank you.